Good, good afternoon. First question to the, to the audience. Um, um, I promised, although I promised to, to keep the talk in English, uh, does anybody really want me to talk in English? Okay. <laughs> Pumped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What's, what's that all about? From the description you read, it, it's about Linux, it's about Python, it's about async IO, and it's about blinking and, and, and doing, doing GPIO stuff. These are, these are LEDs and, and GPIOs uh, connected to switches and so on. And I want to show you, show you uh, the world, so, so to say. Uh, what, what, it's, what it's about, it's, it's um, this little program that I, that I wrote using a user interface toolkit. This, this is really, really cool. Uh, this is Textual uh, from textualize.io. It's a user interface toolkit which is which is terminal based, which is written in Python and it uses async IO heavily. I use that to 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 craft a, a user I'm not a user interface programmer, so to say, which, which you which you can see from here. Uh, I run away screaming if I if I see CSS for example. But this this uh, little little cute thing allows me to to pop up a menu of, of programs, so to say, from like that. This is one that what I want to show you, not not user interface programming. At least this is I'm the wrong person for that. Uh, left button and the buttons, the buttons. It's, it's about buttons. It's, it's about bringing events from I/O buttons from GPIO interrupts into the into the system, into the program, using uh, async I/O. This is basically what I want to show you. Okay, uh, let, let's start. Let's start. It's about coding. This is this is what I am. I, I, I used to code. Uh, this little program. Let me let me show you. How that what what it does GPIO the demo it turns an LED on and off. How does it do that? Uh, it does it by by using GP, the GPIO the libgpio. This is a user interface uh, a, a, a a user space library, which which uses the, the the kernel GPIO subsystem, the new version of it. Maybe maybe many of you maybe some of you will know the SysFS GPIO. Uh, which, which is file-based and rather clumsy and not performant. It, it has shortcomings to no end. Uh, and this, this, this new, it, it exists for 10 years, so to say, uh, is based on a, on a device, on a character device interface, where, where the programmer, the, the user space uh, program, uh, sends I.O. requests, I.O. control requests to the kernel over this, this character device interface. This is how it works. And this little program uses the, the, the Python binding of the, of the user interface, uh, of the user space library, in, which is written in C on, on, the, on the basis, to request on this, on this GPIO chip, can you see that? This GPIO chip zero on the Raspberry Pi, uh, the, the I.O. number 13, which is the middle of this matrix, for output, the direction is uh, output, output. This is what you, what you see, this is what you see here. That's it. Uh, let, me, let me quickly transform this to, to something that I wrote. I wrapped this, this GPIO, the interface, uh, by, by doing um, from blink dot glt 2024.box import box and instant, instantiate this, this little helper class. What, what does it do? This box. Uh, defines this matrix, this defines the, the, the I.O. numbers, the, 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 the GPIO numbers, and does this request thing around these, builds up a matrix which I then can access uh, comfortably. Let's instantiate this box. This is, this is hardwired, and do away with, with all this, 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 this stuff and just pull out the LED from it, uh, matrix.get, like by X and Y position. And then let's, let's set the LED to true, which is, which is more, more manageable, so to say. So, no, false. That's it. That's basically, that's basically it. Blinks. Just like before, just, just more comprehensible. Uh, and what about, what, about, what about blinking? Let's, let's, I pull in snippets to, to not, not have to type. I'm a bit nervous and, and, and trembling. And, uh, and let, let's, let's blink the LED with this tiny little program at an interval of 0 0.2, uh, five times, so to say. That's, that's a program. That's it. It blinks. I forgot to pull out my notes. Oh, my God.
Okay. Now about about this is only one LED. Let's suppose suppose we this is five by five by five LEDs, twenty five LEDs. How about blinking all of these? The, the na a naive approach. I want to show you what async I/O does as opposed to threading. Let's let's pull in pull in a snippet which which is multi-threaded from threading import thread. This is the Python way of of doing threads. You create a thread, start the, the the startup routine and blink blink an LED which I pull out from the matrix by x and y positions that I that I traverse over. Um, at a random interval, 50 times, so to say. Okay, this is what I do. Let me eliminate this LED to eliminate this, this clashes. This is not needed anymore. So, what this program does, this transformed program does, is blink all of these in random intervals for 50 times, 50 times, so to say. This is these are 25 threads, 25, 25 threads off. In, off. Switch this off again. Um, but this is not what we want. Multi-threading, 25 threads for for simply for simply. What do these these 25 threads do? No, not, none of these does actually do anything. They 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 they, they switch context between each other. The operating system is is heavily loaded by switching context. The one one says, "Please, dear Colonel, put me to sleep for." This, this amount of time, then wake me up again, and so on. And the kernel has 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 a heavy load to to buy it, but for to, for doing this context switching. So let me transform this little program by importing async I/O. No, let let me show you. Sorry, as I said, I'm a bit nervous. Let me show you what this system load is by 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 running. This program S S trace minus F to 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 follow to 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 follow into these threads as they are cre created. Uh, what what the operating system does? You see on the, on the left column you see process IDs, which are the handles for the scheduling, what, which the kernel does. Yeah, this is this is what we see: threads bouncing back and forth on the CPUs. The Raspberry Pi is not not, not exactly a embedded platform, so to say. It has four CPUs of roughly one gigahertz each and four gigabytes of memory. This is not what I what I call what I call embedded, so to say. What the fuck? I was hoping that this does not happen. The process has put itself into the background. If anybody knows what's what's going on here, please tell me. I cannot switch that off because the process is still running in the background. I have no idea. This is some Python and threading artifact that we that we see here. So let's let's import async IO and transform this entire program to be not multi-threaded by by what what mechanism? This is what 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 what's at the basis of async IO. Let me await. You say you say you, you don't say you don't say please kernel put me aside for for this amount of time. But you say, "Hey, Colonel, uh, no, no, you, you don't talk to, to the Colonel at all. You, you talk to the event loop. There's an event loop in the middle of the program, which dispatches 25, 25 instances of a coroutine. This is a coroutine. Dispatches 25 instances, instances of, a, of, of this coroutine inside one thread. This, this program is single-threaded. We will, we will look into it when the transform, transformation is done." Um, dispatches and and what what this await and this async to sleep does is just just um, hey dear 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 event loop please uh, I'm done with it call me back in interval seconds this is what this await does it tells me call me back call me back it's in, it's inherently callback based but the programmer does not need to to deal with callbacks from JavaScript programmers async JavaScript programmers no callback hell result from 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 doing this, you have to, to be very, very strict and very, very disciplined uh, in, in programming. You have to, to build up explicit state machines, if you want, to, to accomplish that. This is, this is not necessary anymore. So let me put this, this random, the, the includes, the, the imports at the top. And let's transform the, the rest of the program. What do you, what do, you do, what do, you, what do you say when you, when you do async? You define a main routine that you then, uh, that you then, um, that you then 
run with async error, which does all the rest. This is the main, the main thread, so to, so to see. This, this, is, this is not a thread, but let's, let's view it in analogy to, to threads. And you don't, you don't uh, create threads, but rather, but rather tasks. So you say, what, what you say is, you say async error, create task. This is the analogy of a thread. This is, it's not a thread. Did I close all braces? Yes, I did. The tasks are not not running yet, but they are uh, they are they are queued to the to the event loop to be scheduled as as it's time. When they, when 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 this this routine is over, when this routine routine is over, the entire thing is single threaded. When this routine is over, not over. This this routine the routine is is not over. But when, when this routine awaits for something, it tells the event loop, next, next, please. And then this is when, when all these, ta these, ca these tasks are scheduled in a round robin or whatever, whatever way. So this, that was the transformation. Let me quickly look, double check. Yeah. Should work. OK. Where is it? S trace. Let's, let's start with S trace. Let's, let's see. What, what the system does. It blinks just like before, just like threads. But there are no process ID showing up in the first column, which means this is a single thread. This is a single thread of execution, which is good, which is good. Because if you don't happen to have uh, an embedded platform with four processes of, of, of one gigahertz each, then you are thankful that you don't have to create another thread for just a fucking LED, so to say. So. And what we what we saw what we saw from from this S trace output there is no blocking going on. The only blocking is uh, that is going on in in a in a async error, in an event driven program is the blocking that the event loop does. If nobody needs to do anything, then it's the event loop, the only routine, the only the only code block that that, that sleeps. This is the epoch wait. This is the, the Linux specific uh, event multiplexing. Uh, thing, you see, these are not the timeouts in milliseconds, so to say. There are different timeouts. This is this is because because we we chose a random interval, so so it, it waits for the next waits for the next timeout to happen. Okay, uh, okay. This is async I/O. Async that, That's that's about it all. That's about it all. Um, what I want to show you only briefly is what is this blinking all about, this blinking. I mean, what, what, what I did, this was, was uh, the, the focus of, the, of my last year's talk, 2023, I talked about a, a let's say, let's say a, a functional paradigm to, 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 to write blinking patterns, so to say. Yeah. So, so what, what, what you say is um, switch an LED on, Combine that with a sleep of 0.2 seconds. Combine that with a, with a sleep. These two, two programs are combined via one, another another primitive called any, which 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 schedules uh, on the on the on the basis two tasks, and uh, terminates when the first of, of those is is over. So so when you when you say on the, this 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 middle LED, this is two two, uh, is switched on indefinitely up to eternity. Uh, but it is cancelled. This task is cancelled when the when the other in the in the any primitive uh, terminates 0 0.2 seconds. And what else? What else? Uh, there is this forever primitive and the sequence, which is any and, and the, the the following sleep. And what what this, this this pattern gives is a blinking LED, so so to say. With an, it's a, it's another way of programming blinking patterns. This is what you, what you saw from this uh, textual textual pro. Uh, uh, Demonstration that I that I showed you uh, up front. Okay, but next, it's not about it's not about not about this 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 blinking stuff. But let me show you something. Uh, what's that? Uh, nice nice pattern. Let let me pull in another pattern. Comment that out that out, and insert uh, this this nice a nice pattern. And what do you what do you see here? It's the, it's the next topic. This is wait button wait button. This nice pattern. Does what does this do? You see this forever walk, uh, outer ring, forever walk, reversed inner ring, clockwise, and blink the middle LED. This is what it does. Then it, it waits. It combines this with any with wait button on the on the, on the left button and the right. I, I will show you. It's it's not so important. What's important is is this wait button. The, the, 
taking taking an interrupt from from a from a GPIO which is con configured for in input on either ro rising or falling edge. This is what this wait button primitive in my in this blinking thing does. So nice pattern, is it? Yeah. So suspend with the left button, restart with the right button, taking events from from GPIOs. This is what I want to show you next. Not 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 this not this blinking stuff. So. I prepared a, a, a another program which shows GPIOT used from from a different angle. Which, what what was done here is it configures the DIO 26 on the Raspberry Pi, which is the left, which is bound to the left button. The other is 19 uh, for for input, for input and uh, to to yield an event on a rising edge. So let, let's see what, what that is, what it does. And what, uh, what, uh, GPO, uh, what the, what the GPOD request, it provides a bunch of methods. One of these is the read edge events. It blocks there, it blocks there, and reads the edge events that I, that I then output. Let me show you that. So it sits, it does nothing until I press the button, which is then, then you see a bunch of events uh, come in when I press, uh, when I release the button, the, 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 the edge detection is, is configured improperly. And what, what else do you see? It, it brings me one from one button, when I, when I press it very, very heavily, a bunch of events. Uh, and that is, this is because the, 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 the hardware mechanics bounces. This is, this is bouncing of, the, of, of an I.O. It's just because the metal scratches upon, up, upon each other. Um, and this GPIOD gives me a way to... debounce period, it speaks. Uh, you pass it a time delta object, which I imported from the, the, the Python date time uh, module, milliseconds. I give it... Uh, this is an empirical value. 10 milliseconds, milliseconds is a good, is a good value to debounce. And the effect of this is that per button press, you see only one event. It collapses events if less than 10 milliseconds uh, pass between them. Okay, and it collapses. Uh, it 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 it, uh, it brings me an event when I release the button. This is not what I want. The user expects when I press the button that the event is, is released. So let me change this quickly. Uh, falling. It's a falling edge. Because I, I pulled up the IOs, and when I press the button, it's either they are shorted to ground. And yeah, that's it. OK. OK. But this is not async. This is not async. But because because you see, it blocks until events are available. Read edge events blocks until until you do something. The, the GPIO, the uh, driver machinery inside the kernel, Raspberry specific in this case, uh, does 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 all that. So, okay, async I/O. Let me import async I/O, and let's trans transform this. No, let me let me do let me do let me do something else. Um, let's do something which which uh, let me parameterize that. Um, let's say the device and the number, and then um, I define I define an events. Function, which 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 is not a function, but let's transform this function to a generator. Whoever knows uh, who knows Python a little bit more closely, that's a generator. You yield the event to to somebody that might want to that might want to use it. So so uh, what what this gives me is an, a nice decoupling of 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 producer, of event producer, and the consumer, because, because the, the, the calling the events routine gives me a generator, 26, 
that I then can use to loop over whatever it gives me. So it, it decouples the, comp the, the consumption of, of events from the production of events. So let's see if this works. Um, interrupts. This is not async. This is just just using Python a bit more, a bit more uh, intelligently looping. Uh, so what we what we see is we loop over things that that are not there, that are not yet there. This is the, this is the, 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 the this, that's what generators do. That's, that's what generators do. This is the next cool, the, the next cool Python feature that I love. Um, but let's let's move this 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 thing to to async I/O. So why why want why why do I want to move this to to async I/O? I have, I have another button. I have the 19. I have the 19er. Um, and and I want to to have two tasks that read reads this in, in inside a single thread um, that does similar things read these in parallel inside a single inside a single thread. This is this is not not trivial. Um, so so what I what I want to do is define another function the task main routine print event print events. Again, with these oh God, these parameters, let me put that aside. For event in events uh, device device number. That's it. And then print. Then print what com what comes out of this. And as we saw in the in the other program in the GPIOD demo. You create a main function to start up, to, to, to spawn off the tasks that do the real work inside, which is the print event. So this is what I do now. I say async dev main. It doesn't. It, you don't. You don't have to call it main, but it's just just common sense to do this. Create a task. Print events. So that one and 26. It's the first task. I'm going to create a second task, 19. This is the other button. And then await both. You have to await these tasks, because otherwise the system will termin out, terminate without having, having awaited these tasks, which is not good. This is just, just, like, just like terminate a program where threads are still running and, and not, not, not caring about a correct shutdown. So to say. So when you do this, when you do this, this there is still a lot missing, a lot missing here, because this print events is still a function. You see the def. There is no async def in the in the definition of the print events function. So this is not a coroutine factory. This cannot become a coroutine by calling it. But 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 rather this is this is just a simple function which blocks, and you will never create a task because you block here. Uh, what's necessary is to to write async. Write as much, as, as many asyncs as you as you can inside your code, then you will have an async I/O program. No, it's not the case. You have to understand. You have to understand what, understand what this this event event thing is. Uh, it looks simple, but, but but you have to understand how how this how, how all this works. This this is the downside of that. Multi-threading is simple, except you 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 program race conditions over and over. You know, then it's not simple anymore. So. Um, so what else? What else? Okay, async. Again, this calls this calls another another events. What's the blocking? When, when you see you see this this events whatever the cursor stands, this, this events routine is called, and this event events routine has a, has an important comment in, inside blocks until events are available. So this is another no go. You you never block inside an event driven pro program. It's only one thing that blocks inside an event-driven program. This is the event loop with epoch weight. You you don't block. You you should not block. So what's that? Uh, so this is a function. This cannot be a function either. So you have to write async. Async async all over. Pour, pour a, a bin of asyncs into the program and and let, let's see let's see what that what that what that brings. Let's see what that brings. Um, this won't work, but uh, I, I don't refuse to start it. Yeah, what, what it what it says now? 
Okay, what it says now, it's a, it's a bit hard to read, error, error messages and debugging with AsyncO is, is rather heavy, you forget it, forget it, be, be correct from the, from the beginning. Uh, but what, what it says, async generator object is not iterable. Async, that's an async generator. What, what is this? What? Uh, when, when, you, when you omit this async, it's a, it's a simple generator. It's, a, it's not a function. It's a, it's a generator by using yield. Yield event uh, makes a simple an, an innocent def in something into something completely different, namely a, a a generator. When you write this async, this becomes an async generator. So so what? So you cannot. What, what this means? Um, this is not a generator, so you cannot use the for loop. Generators are made for, 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 to, to be used by for loops. So um, for loops work, work, work in a way, uh, they use the, the iterator protocol, whoever knows that, who knows that. Uh, so it's again blocking by pulling the next thing, the, the next thing out of the generator, the next event out of the generator. This might block. That's the point. Again, this might block. So. Uh, so we have to use, in this case, a different form of a for loop, namely, namely, namely the, the async for, which is a completely, works completely different. Async, async, the, 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 the 101st uh, async in, in, in this program. That's a different thing. It pulls out the next thing of the generator, but not blocking, but does this based on callbacks. Again, on callback, the for loop works uh, with, with callbacks again. So let's see if this would work. No, this, this wouldn't work. This wouldn't work. Uh, it, it, would, it would run. It would run, but it, it runs. Uh, it, it appears to work in that the left button yields me the events, but the right button uh, is disregarded. So let me. Let me show you what this is. You, you see, still this comment, there's still this comment in this line. There's still this comment in this line. Here we block. We say, read edge events no matter what. If there are no events, we block until events are there. So what I want to show you is, is how to bring an event notification, a callback, an, an event loop notification into this coroutine object. When I start this, this events function, this is not a function, this is a, a coroutine factory, so to say. It becomes a coroutine, which is, which is an object which communicates with the event loop in a, in a rather, rather, rather low-level way, yield. Um, and so, so this is one thing that communicates with the event loop. It says, please event loop, wake me up in, in a minute or uh, wake me up when, when requests are there, when, when events are there on the, on, the, on the GPIO. So what I have to do is um, to understand what event notifications are on Linux and Unix, um, what file descriptors are there for. Event notifications on, on, on Linux uh, are file descriptor based, you know, say, say network programming, so to say. You have sockets. Sockets, sockets are represented to, in user space by file descriptors, and file descriptors are exactly the handles that, that allow you to watch for multiple, for a multitude of these file descriptors in a row, in an event loop, and tell the event loop the epoll wait system call, for example, or poll or select, or a bunch of, a bunch of parallel system calls with all the same focus, but different implementations, allow, you, allow me, allow the programmer to, to watch multiple of them, to block for multiple of these event sources, and call you back when one of them, or many, some of them are ready. And by, by correct programming, you as a programmer, or the, or the Python programmers, Guido van Rossum le, uh, leads the, the, the async IO uh, front there. Uh, so, so, so the basis of retrieving events, input events, timer events, socket events, whatever events, any, any kind of events, is, is by, by watching, watching file descriptors. So, so the basis of, of what, what I'm up to is the FD member of the request structure that, that, that I created. That I just created, I created an, an, a request, and the request carries an FD with it in case somebody wants to have notifications in, in that kind. Um, okay, that's it. And then there is, sorry, 
Uh, then then I, need, need a, I need a handle to the event loop that is running me. I'm, I'm uh, me, the, the events. The coroutine is scheduled by a loop. And now, when I want to do these, these low level things, I say get current loop. Hey loop. And then, then, I, then I tell it. Then I tell it. Then I tell the loop to, to add a reader. There are multiple kinds of notifications. Uh, uh, I, want a, I want a read notification because the, the method is called read edge events and I'm retrieving input into, into the program. I'm not waiting for output and I'm, I'm not, not waiting for anything else. And how this goes, I tell a loop to watch me this file descriptor among possibly many others uh, and call me back when, when something's there. When, I'm, when, I, when uh, the callback is not there, I didn't program it yet, but when this callback is, is called by the event loop, then this, this is a promise to me that I can read edge events without blocking. That's it, okay? That's it at the basis, at the basis. So let's, let's program the callback. I say, let's retrieve the events and not block because, because we have been called. We have been called. So I say, copy that. Oh, gosh. I got no mouse because this is a terminal Emacs. So let's read the edge events here. So in, on what? What? This is the callback. This is still in the context of the of the event loop, which is caused, just caused the callback. Uh, I'm not yet in the in the call routine. I'm not not yet in the call routine. I have not not scheduled this call routine in any way. It's just an extension of the event loop that just does something because I tell it to. Uh, and the device to do this is is a future. This is, that's a future. I, I tell the loop to create me a future. Future object, create a future, and let, let's not let's not call it future. Let's 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 name it by what it does. It signals me that events are ready. Let's let's call it future event. It's a future, and 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 the way the way you you use a future is once you have something. I have the events. I have just read the events without blocking. That's the point. Uh, I have something, and now I use the the future, which is a communication channel from somewhere to somewhere. I tell it to set the result. That's the method of the of that future. That future. I, I just call back events ready. Set set result. In case in case somebody's waiting for that event, and who's waiting? You can imagine that it's it's the coroutine object that 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 might want to await the fact that events are ready. You can await futures, you can await tasks, you can await uh, a multitude of things in the inside this, this async error thing. The future is the most low-level device to, to, to be awaited. And then, when, when, when we are woken up, then the callback has been triggered and the result, result is ready, set result has been caught. So the await comes back, the event loop knows, oh yeah, uh, some, something's ready, he wants to know it. And um, then I can here, yeah, use this communication device to retrieve the result. Okay? And then I consume the events. Events. That's it. That's it, basically. That's it, basically. Except that um, this future that I just allocated above, here I allocated the first time in order to be used by, 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 by the callback. This is a one-shot device. It's, it, it can be set only once and can be consumed on in only only once. It can be awaited only once. Once it's ready, it's it's gone. It's 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 dead. So what I what I have to do next is to to allocate another one. This is extremely light lightweight. It's a memory allocation, but this is Python, so nobody cares about small allocations. Uh, so I put in place a new future future. Uh, Object for the next round, for the next callback to be to be used by the next callback. Uh, for multi-threaded programmers among you, uh, they they might raise eyebrows at, at this case. So so multi-threaded programmers are extremely aware, extremely aware of race conditions and parallelism. 
So you might want to think that this callback, while I, while I exchange the, the old uh, events ready object with a new one, somebody might want to call the callback. But this is not the case in, in, in this case. This is, this is what async error is there for. This is, this is a way to not have any, any race conditions of this stupid, extremely stupid kind uh, by, by making parallel code. Uh, this is only a thi single thread. So this cannot be the case that this callback is called while I'm inside this code. Uh, code is, is, is by nature atomic, so to say. Atomic. Uh, you just have to take care that you do it before you yield to the to the to the outside code, this, which is that is the case. So let's eliminate this comment which has become false, and see if this if this works. So we have a callback called by the event loop, which signals some event which happens to be retrieved by a file descriptor. Yeah. Yeah. We have added a reader for this uh, a callback. We have registered a callback inside the event loop for this for this file descriptor for input events, and then I retrieve the input events, and, and the rest is async I/O future usage, so to say. Let's see if that works. Get current loop, oh, oh yeah, yeah, get, get running loop, it's called get running. Get running, the currently running, the currently running loop while I, while this, this events coroutine is, is warm, so. Uh, okay. Button, button here, button here. Yeah. Appears to work. Async, async. Only one thread, two events, a thousand events. So to say, you can you can do more intelligent or more more productive or, or more more useful things than just blinking around on a on a on, on 25 LEDs. But but this is fun. This, that's fun. Um, that's it. Okay. That that was. Basically, basically, the 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 core of the talk to, to show to show you how async error, what's, what async error is and, and how to how to operate in, on a lower level. There, there's much more much more functionality. There. There's an entire protocol stack inside inside async error that and that, that I don't know anything anything of. I know what an event loop is, and I know what what, what programming is. And this 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 is cool to me. So uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Um, in case there are no questions, I have uh, um, a number of other things to show you, which are not, not, not so very important. I want to show you what, what else could be, could be async, so to say. Okay, so let, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, you have seen this, this run menu. As, as I said, I'm, I'm not, a, not a user interface programmer. I run away screaming, it's, 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 it's painful and... Uh, and uh, I extremely dislike it, and what I, what I do here, these are, these are uh, let me show you that, what is that? Uh, that's, that's uh, for, for, this is GLD 2024 20, submodule GLD, where, where I have a bunch of programs, Blink Rose, for example, Blink Rose, uh, with, with a doc string with them, and, and a bunch of others, and a bunch of others, and at the bottom of this file there is this menu, I have this uh, a variable, a list, a, a tuple, uh, which which contains all these functions, all these this this is not functions, but rather coroutine, coroutine, coroutine factories, so to say. And this is what what I managed to program user interface wise to, to show up here in a, on a on a on a selection menu. I have uh, I have no idea how this is called, but that was cool. You can you can say yeah. Um, and on the right side, and in this in this text area, you see the doc string, and this, the left side is the function's name. And I iterate over it and compose such things, and you, you can do you can do that. And uh, functionality is, I mean, I mean, if you are programmers, you will you will be more interested in in what what this is. What this is. Uh, uh, let's open the, the source of this run menu. You see. <laughs> um, this is, if you are a web programmer, then you will be very comfortable with, with the management of, 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 of this. This is a terminal user interface where, where, you, where you say, yeah, compose, and it, it's documented. You yield a header, you know, blah, blah, and um, you know better than I what, what's, what's, what's done here. And you see, you see this label, the ID, yeah, give an ID level to the Python objects, ID proc list. And it's these IDs of the user interface elements that you can reference from 
this very simple minded I, I managed to 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 bring that and ran away ran away because it was it was painful you I said mean wit so if you if you don't if you don't if you don't add a css then then you see the, the default layout which is which adapts and and, and so on and uh, i don't want that so i want I want CSS. I, I don't want CSS, but maybe you want. This is this is textu textual, uh, textual, textualized.io is the homepage. Uh, there are there are links in the in the in the in the talk descriptions. I, I give give a link to the, to the slide material, if you want to call it, in this way. Uh, and another thing that I that I could show you is let me quickly. Ah, cool, cool. This is not from me. This, this is not what I did. Uh, this is an image viewer. <laughs> uh, to remember, this, this is an SSH terminal session On, onto the Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's an image viewer. Uh, let me let's view an image. I mean, no, no, um, it, it, it's it's rather pixeled. It's a little pixeled. But this is a, a, a I don't know. Don't know. I'm not uh, botanic. Botanic. This is Strandlilie. Yeah, <laughs> it's a flower that, that I discovered on the last holiday. Cool. Somebody else programmed that. Uh, and what else? Deepers. Who, who knows Deepers? I walked through to the very end. So uh, let me. Okay. Let's start. A Deepers Blink. Deepers Blink server. Yeah? A Deepers Deepers object. Deepers. And then. Uh, I should have done this beforehand. Uh, white. I created a Deepers server, which I, I can bus control bus bus control. The, the the implementation of this Deepers thing is is async, and it is based op upon the system D implementation of the of uh, of the Deepers client, which is in inherently callback based. These guys do that; they do very intelligent things. Uh, and what you can do is say with the, with the associated client program, the command line client program, bus control, which comes with the system D, D bus implementation. You can say, show me what's show me what's there on the user on the session bus of D bus. And the, there, there you see there's there's this 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 D bus uh, server that announces itself uh here so let's 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 say introspect it comes with command line completion it's, it's fascinating uh, and then your know, command line completion you say introspect is a sub command of this bus control and then you another, another command line completion you say what what's there and then, then, then the list comes ah yeah, i want the me this is that one that, that's that's him hmm. okay it's there then what else what else introspect i'm introspecting on the command line by using the tab key which is So, and then, then, then he says, "Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this object at, at slash on, on the, there is only the root, the root object. Uh, it says, yeah, yeah. It, it offers me an interface. It, it offered me, me, me four interfaces, and then the me flashing bar blink interfaces that what, is what I wrote. Every Dbus object has multiple inter interfaces, which come from the Dbus internal world to do introspection and so on. Dbus introspectable and so on. I want to via the Dbus uh, uh, me flashing bar blink." Interface. I want to. Yeah, that's it. I want to. I can use that to. Finally, call. What? Which? I defined two methods, two debug methods. There. Uh, the first is a list of programs, which is again the, the program names of what I just showed you via this terminal user interface over debug. Give, give me the list of programs which which are available. And then I can say, no, uh, not, not programs. I want to launch one of these. Um, ah, the deeper signature. So uh, what uh, I want to, to launch, which one? Which one do I want to launch? The nice pattern, that one. That's it, over, over Dbus, if, if you want. Uh, nobody wants that. But it's, it's very, very, cool, very cool tinkering. And, and then, then you say, uh, start me the next one, kill that. Raindrops. No, okay, that's it. Um, thanks for listening. I hope 
there are more questions than before. <laughs> Thank you.